Good day, everyone. I hope you're all keeping well. Welcome back. Once again, it's the. I thought I'd put the stream on and have a bit of a chat. If you didn't catch the previous stream, I'm uh, using SketchUp 2016 Pro to design all our kits, and we've been using that for many, many years. And I don't see the need to have to upgrade to the latest version. I've been having heaps of fun lately playing with uh, my <laughs> Imperial Fists for 40k. Let me just drag, drag this up. You can float through my photos with me. I've been uh, painting my Imperial Fists lately. I got this guy done. Knights of Dice Kits for... 40k stuff because you know 40k is super expensive and uh you know with the, I don't have a huge amount of cash to splash on you know all this crap so I've been doing trades with and so I got this the other night and uh pop it pop, put it together and slap some paint on I think it took me two evenings to get this guy done pretty simple sort of paint job um those which I like to really help make it pop Great fun to work on. It's really interesting, you know, when you take photographs, you can see this one here looks very, very different than this image here. The, you know, the, the, the camera just does something weird. You know, I'm just using my um, Samsung phone to take the pictures. Um, but, you know, they were great fun. You know, I cracked out some of those, some of the flyboys. Where are the flyboys? Up night. Yeah, I painted up these flyboys as well. I don't know what they're called. Um, and this lieutenant guy, captain, you know, whatever he is. Um, so I got those guys done as well. They came, uh, I got those last year when Indominus came out and Stu from Mind Games in the city here in Melbourne had asked me if I wanted to have some, you know, some of these flyboys. I don't know what they are. I'm going to find out what they're called. Um, but they were great fun. So I painted that, those guys in an maybe two evenings or something like that. Um, no, great fun. Again, you can see the difference here. These look really yellow in this picture, but in this one, they're much more true to the color. I, you know, I much prefer that sort of mustard, sort of yellow sort of color that uh, you, know, you get over a, a light brown base coat. Where are we? What am I doing? Let's go back up here. Solvix, hello, how are you? Thanks for joining me once again. Certainly appreciate you hanging out with me last time and, you know, hopefully you'll be here for a little bit today. So anyway, let's get back to this, you know, working on those uh, Space Marines and hanging out at the club. You know, we've got a great gaming club. I'll, I'll come back real quick. Let's um, let's get these photos back up. You know, I'm, I'm so happy with our club. Let's... Oh, yeah. Um... We've moved, we used to be up at Torbone Moose, which was a brewery up in Preston, um, but we've now moved to the uh, Thornbury Bowls Club. It's a much, much bigger space. We can actually have the lights on. We used to have people gaming at the gaming club with their mobile phones out when they were playing games with the light on so they could see what they're doing, because we were, we were playing in a pub. And uh, you know, whilst we, we could set up lights and stuff, it was uh, tricky. To, to to game there. So the, the the bowls club here have been amazing. We've got all different sorts of games being played there. This is game of night age going on. Infinity it looks like. Um, this was the table that I'd set up for me and Ara from Mana Press to play some Tribal on. He ran me through the second edition rules which are coming out at some stage. Uh, some changes in that game that I'm not super happy about. But you know I'll give it. A, I'll give it a chance. Bolt action. You know the club has a whole range of games that get played. You know, 40k, obviously. Um, so much stuff going on. This looks like more 40k, more 40k, infinity again. And so there, there's been a lot of 40k. Blood Bowl is happening. There's a you know, a Blood Bowl league that's starting up soon. Um, and you know, so we have we have this this awesome space to play in. And you know, it's uh it's so, it's so much more enjoyable. We had 49 people there the other day. 
Um, obviously being in a bowls club, we get some nice tasty beers and given that the bowls club is a private association, it's not really a business, the beers are super cheap. Um, so that's, that's a, another cool thing about gaming in the club, uh, you know, so having seen all of this, uh, you know, these games and stuff going on, that's what's got me all inspired to, you know, paint up my Imperial Fists and start making some 40k terrain and stuff. And, um, you know, we have, it's, it's such a great space. We've got to sort out some extra tabletops here. We have role players that come in um, and, you know, all different sorts of stuff is being played from the rogue planet and, um, you know, heaps of stuff. Lots of small little indie stuff as well. It's great fun. Anyway, let's, let's, get, let's get out of here. All right, let's come back to SketchUp. And so last time we finished up, oh, hang on, my typical fashion, let's just jump around a little bit more. Why is that taskbar not at the top up there where I can see it easily? So last time we got to, where did we get to? This model here. So I assembled the model that we designed in the last stream Super simple, went together. I, I made a little video and we streamed that. Putting this all together was a little bit tricky uh, simply because, you know, it didn't cut very well. You can see that's torn up here a little bit. That was my bad. I didn't have the right settings on the laser. But anyway, it's super simple ruin, right? Let's go back this way. Super simple ruin. So let's, let's carry on. And as the title of this video says, I've got no idea what to do with these ruins. What's a design? Now we, we, we designed this and we spent hours, you know, <laughs> chatting and stuffing around. Four and a half hours, I think I streamed for. And we made this ruin here, you know, that, that goes together. You know, these two parts clip together. Um, but in terms of, you know, simple stuff for the club, I really wanted to just build a collection of stuff that you know, we could have for, um, you know, events and whatnot. And whilst these sort of simple ruins are okay, they're still super, super simple. So I'm not sure what we'll do with these. Somebody did mention on Facebook about having, you know, a bundle deal of, uh, you know, all of the dream kits. Which, you know, we may or may not do. I don't, I don't know. All right, let's have a look at that chat. So Sebastian B is here. Hey Viv, how are you? I'm good, mate. I'm 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 really well. So Vic says it's a great space to play. It is. It's super. It's super great. The club has space in the garage of the Bowls Club. All our stuff is there. It's it's so much better than the Bowls Club. And you know we meet every Wednesday and it's great fun. You know we get really good turnout. We can get any type of food we want delivered to the Bowls Club. So. <laughs> question for you how do you get your designs out of SketchUp onto your laser so we went through that um, last week let's have a rule we'll, we'll recap just for you so we've we've designed this model here right this is the model that we designed and then we have to flatten that model and you can see I've got it flattened here already um, once this model is flattened then we can export this out into Adobe Illustrator that's what we use quite frequently people will use Corel Draw to do their artwork for uh, processing on their lasers etc but we use Adobe Illustrator so if you're using SketchUp let's just zoom back out here and grab that model there it is if you're using SketchUp like we do I use a couple of extensions one of them we ran through last week which was make faces um, or I mentioned last week, we haven't used it yet, but we probably will be shortly because I want to design some different windows. These fucking rectangular windows are super boring. And we also use another one, but I don't know what it's called. And it's used for flattening out the images for, you know, going to Illustrate for, you know, flattening out all these pieces. So if you're using SketchUp and you select a face in one of your components and you right click and you, if you don't see this option here unwrap and flatten faces and you can select this one here unwrap and flatten if you don't see that then there's some sort of plugin that you need now what that plugin is I've got no idea what it's called it might it might simply be called unwrap and flatten faces um, I'm not sure so we'll just grab this a copy of this model push it up off the deck so we get a little bit of height key to move up we go so I want to flatten out this wall here so I can get its shape to laser cut so it's, it's flattened out that shape and it just drops it on the deck here once I've flattened all those pieces 
where am I? Once I've flattened all those pieces, then I simply take this into Illustrator. Now, I still haven't uh, on uh, my computer here. Oh yeah, there's my sheet graphic that I just made before. I need to save that chunk. Um, once I've got that here into Illustrator, oh, I've laid up the split rooms too. Did I sprue those? Did we go through that last time? Room one, stream one, there we go. Once we've got those out into Illustrator here, for us, we simply go up to our file menu and we print this. And we print this to a, a program called Job Control. And it creates a, a file, a JPX or JFX or whatever it is, that our lasers will then open and laser cut. And I, did we go through that in the previous stream? Oh yes, that's right. That's when I tried to make play that video. <laughs> Maybe I'll get that working. That's when I tried to play that video, but my hotkeys kept on stopping the video and changing the scene. <laughs> uh, I reckon we must have started that video five times, I reckon. It was a, the biggest drama ever. I've turned off the hotkeys now. Uh, anyway, so when we get it into Illustrator here, there's a little bit of work that we need to do to the drawings that come from SketchUp, but then we can simply print this. These are all hairline... Um, uh, you know, line diagrams. Anyway, so that that's that's how we do it. Just real quick, Sebastian is. You now we we use that um, flatten faces tool, and then we uh, process it here in Adobe Illustrator and file print it to our Trotec machines. Jordan Cole says, "Hey Viv, how's things, mate? Happy to see a little SketchUp wizardry. I use it to plan furniture carpentry projects, but really only have a basic grasp on the program." still super useful though well you know for most of what we do it's super simple and i and i touched on this last time when we were going through uh, designing this model and let's 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 start designing something while we're carrying on let's do this model over here um you know most of the stuff that we do in sketchup is pretty simple you know there's 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 nothing amazing about it it's it, most of it comes down to you know design uh and you know Scott's, Scott's always been the wizard in that respect, in terms of, you know, designing stuff in SketchUp. There are some things in SketchUp that uh, are just easy for us to do in Illustrator, and we'll, we'll, we'll go and have a look at that in a second. As I mentioned before, I want to change these windows. So I just need to add some tabs for this building, because you can see that, uh, you know, this wall here, let's just grab this wall. It doesn't actually, there's no plugs in 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 this wall here for these slots. Uh, there's no slots for these plugs to go into. So we just need to make some room for them. Which way are we going? Oh, this way, it's free wheel. Get rid of that one. That one. Get rid of one. So in terms of, you know, <laughs> Sketch up wizardry, Jordan. I don't know how much wizardry you're going to see here, especially given that most of this shit is happening super late at night, and um, it is going to be, uh, you know, I don't know how useful for people, but you know, it gives me um, something to do, and you know, hopefully, you find it a bit entertaining. So chop that off there. All right, so now we've got. A wall that plugs onto this side. Let's sort out these plugs over here. Um, so I don't know how keen I am to play some 40k at the club. I probably will end up playing something. Um, let's have a look. Let's clear out all this stuff. Mostly because, you know, it's it's fairly popular. There's a lot of people who are playing it. And it's one of those games that's just always in the back of my mind that I just can't seem to uh, let go of. I, I always come back to it. Um, so we'll, we'll see. I'm just pushing both of these, you know, I drew a line there to create this tab. And... Uh, Something weird going on here.
But how is your carpentry going, Jordan? I hope things are over there in the US are, are well for you, mate. Let's draw a line across to you. Whenever you're on one of these axes, if you hold your shift key, it'll keep everything in alignment. Carry on on that same axis. But, oh yeah, th in theory. <laughs> right, that completes our floor. So again, I've no idea what to do with these um, these kits. What's going on? Uh, it wigs out sometimes like this you know it's such a weird program let's pull that out by three mil just need to move some things around so we can see what we're doing all right now we can put some tabs in this wall here so normally when i'm drawing tabs on simple models like this you can see here that these two walls interface with each other this floor and this wall and there's my intersecting wall set or floor section. And if I go into that floor section, normally on simple models like this, I'll just find the center and draw a line through it, find the center of that next line and draw a line through it, find the center of that next line and draw a line through it. We'll get rid of that one in the middle. Select this one, press my M key on my key. But again, your shortcuts might be different and just copy this and move it over 20 mil. And then I'll copy this one and move it over 20 mil. All right, those tabs are a little bit too close for me, so I'm gonna grab both of these. I'm just going to move them over 10 mil. Grab these two. Over 10 mil. And then we'll push everything else in three mil. Push that in, push that in, and push that in. And now I have a floor section with a couple of tabs on it. Now we just need to make some slots in the wall for this one at the top to go in. Just copy around that. I'm in the face of that wall section now. And copy around these ones. And these ones. Select my face. Control X to cut it. Control A to select everything. Delete. Control F to paste it back in place. B for push pull. Push it away from me. 3 mil. My number pad. And there we go. Now we've got a wall that's going to plug onto those tabs. Sobic says, I want to play 40k until I play it. <laughs> it's not for me anymore. Um, well, you know, I don't really know the game. And, you know, at the end of the day, you know, I don't really know too many games. I don't spend enough time playing too many games to really get into the nuances of them all. I'm very much a casual gamer. Most of the time I'm at the club, I'm just hanging out with people and having a great time or, you know helping be the facilitator of other people playing games so i don't really mind how interesting rules are or how complex they are or um all of that sort of stuff it's more just about you know the social experience of hanging out with people and you know whether the game's actually good or not is kind of mildly irrelevant but you do hear that from people all the time that uh that 40k is um a weird game all right so we've got a tab there for that wall does it have a slot it doesn't all right so we've basically taken those two corners of the wall that we had before ruined the top taking the top floor off added another wall and that's it super simple not an amazing model but you know at the end of the day it's not supposed to i haven't figured out why it's snapping like this it shouldn't it should allow me to go wherever i want i've obviously got something selected that's doing this weird business Chop a bit more of that floor out. 
And when I build these models, you know, this edge is just to give me a profile. I'll come in with my Dremel and hack out all these, all, all of these, you know, ruined edges and stuff off. So I'm not, I don't want to make them too detailed. The more detailed you make them, the, the slower they are to process in the laser and, um, you know, for commercial kits, the more expensive they become. And it, people can just spend a little bit of time with some files or something and really make it very interesting. All right, so there's there's that, there's that. The, again, our floor heights here are three inches. Solvix goes on to say, the problem with 40K is the terrain rules sort of support blocks and ruins, and it's hard to do other stuff without the rule being difficult. Well, you know, this was one of the reasons why, you know, I thought I'd stream this stuff so I could talk to people about, you know, the rules, uh, because I had heard that 40K has weird terrain rules. Um, you know, let me let me let me just pull something up here, just quickly go up here uh, that I found that I saw on, on um, Facebook the other day. I came across this page. Let's drag it on screen. Yeah, this guy here. So I came across this page here, tabletop terrain, and um, you know here a day's progress, cut and base, two hundred and forty individual pieces of terrain. So this guy's obviously um, uh, you know, a mild maniac, um, but you know I saw a picture. It had come up in a comment. It was way down here somewhere that you know he'd built 35 tables of terrain or something for an event. This one here um, for this tournament. You know he built all of these tables. So I was like, what the hell is that? You know, let me have a look. So I went off and had a look and started scrolling through his page. And obviously this is all 40k sort of stuff. But when I started having a look at it, uh, you know, it's all, let's find a better picture. It's all really, really simple stuff. So just these L-shaped ruins, that looks like a five inch gap to me. Maybe. It's just an L-shaped ruin. There's no windows, no, no detail or anything. A floor at the top to put some miniatures. And he's obviously finished off the bases quite nicely with some um, some rubble. Coincidentally, on this page also, I, I I found this. You know, as per usual, let's segue and jump around 400 different times. I found this picture on his page. Um, where are we? It was earlier in March. I saw this picture. I've been obsessed with this image for probably three years now. I have no idea who the creator is. Wink, wink. Uh, is but they're damn talented. I'm going for it. So he made some, um, uh, you know, swampy sort of ruins sort of stuff. But this picture, this is a table that Scott Reed, who's designed most of our kits here at Knights of Dice, and Michael Edwards built at my old shop, the Battle Bunker, that used to be in Northcote about 12 years ago. Um, and they did an amazing job on this. I've, I must have some pictures of this table somewhere, but there's, you know, some... This was way back when Malifaux was going really, really strong. And we built a whole bunch of really nicely themed and detailed um, Malifaux tables. Anyway, so I saw this on their page. So as I was looking through, you know, most of their tables are like this. And so I thought, you know, I can, you know, we can do that here in SketchUp, right? You know, let's, it's stupidly simple. Let's just draw a rectangle. We'll push it out three mil. We'll click on it and make it a group. All right, there we've got one wall. Let's just rotate it up. We'll copy this wall. Obviously this is three mil, so we need to do some, you know, um, a little bit of detail work on it because, you know, three mil is gonna be super, you know, not flimsy, but you know, it's not gonna have a lot of depth. It's not gonna look amazing. Um, let's move that down. Let's drag that down to the bottom. Oops, go sketch up, freak. Let's drag that down to the bottom. Lift it up by five inches. Pull all our walls down. We'll lift them up 20 mil off of the deck. 
So, you know, I could make some super simple stuff like this. Um, pull this out. Here, let's chop out some of this floor. So, you could make some super simple stuff like this, uh, and we'll just copy that whole top down to the base. Why not? But you know, it just seems super, super boring to me. But that seems to be what, at least in competitive 40k, you see all of this L-shaped sort of ruin that doesn't have any holes in it. And when I've watched games of people playing 40k, they seem to be able to shoot right through these walls. They don't seem to need line of sight or something. I don't know. I don't know how it works. Um, it's it's so weird. So Solvik says, could you do um, ruin with a central column that you can line up next to each other, maybe? Walls, something you can add or leave off as wanted. Come back to that in just a second, because I didn't quite understand it. Billy Blink says, evening Viv, hello everyone else. Hey Billy Binks, how are you? Thanks for joining us. Maybe stairs going up the pillar. Solvik goes on again, and I forgive, uh, I forgive my English. It's not something that I'm 100% with. Okay, well, no, no, that's fine. Uh, you know, don't need to apologize for that at all. I can't speak any other languages. So anyone who speaks more than one language is already way better than I am. Could you do ruins with a central column that you can line up next to each other, maybe? So, do you mean something? Let's take this. Let's just group this. Bins this way. Oh, love it when SketchUp just decides to zoom in like four thousand times faster than it normally does, and then you don't know what you're doing anymore. Just the edge of that build. So, being able to line up something like that. So this would work. Let's say, for example, if we get rid of that. Oh man, I didn't fix the symmetrical windows in this kit and it drives me nuts every time I look at it. But let's let's go let's let's go in here. We'll find the center. Those two things should be in the middle. So this is the center of our wall here, right? Is there an easy way? Let's just Cut this here. Cut that there. Just cut this. Delete that, delete that. Okay, so that frees up our windows. So then I've got from this point here. Uh, point 0.395. Go this way. 11.395 Just grab all these windows here Just bear with me for half a second and I will get back to your Suggestion in just a second. I just want to fix those what driving me absolutely nuts So now our windows are symmetrical and we've got a little space for some sort of column. So let's let's just draw a little shape here on the ground, pull it up to three mil, make it a group. All right, it's just some sort of componentry, some a part for us to work with. Let's uh, get it up on its end. Find its center. Put it in the center of this kit here. Way three mil, go into it and we'll pull it all the way up. How is this not in the middle? Did I measure my windows wrong? Maybe this is not in the center. Anyway, so if we have a center column like this, all right? Let's delete this. Let's cut this out of here and we paste it into this group here. Copy it. 
we rotate this? Mm. Because I've got this three mil overhang, I'm still gonna have an issue with this edge here, giving us that gap. Unless I clad the edges, you know, which we could easily do. Put a couple of trim detail on these walls here. Let's move this out of the way so we can get to the other side. So these pieces here, we can plug into the into the floor, and you know, they wouldn't be difficult to align or to you know, pop on the model by hand. This is always an interesting issue here. So, whoops. So this width of this column is going to be some random number, fifteen point two nine six eight eight millimeters. But from uh, this side now to this side, don't I've got that extra three mil of my wall. So when I'm looking at this kit from this side, it's going to have that extra width than when I'm looking at it this way. But for these kits, you know, or this concept, if I clad the edge there so that my base is flush with the facade detail, then when I line this up against that center column, as you suggested, um, you know, I'm going to get some diversity. Mind you, our windows and stuff weren't aligned, but you know that can all be taken care of if we do things symmetrically. All right, so let's come back. So he says, I was thinking like a one inch pillar in the center with floors off it as the main structure. I'm still lost, Solvix. A one inch column, all right, let's make a one inch column. Um, so let's go one inch by one inch and then we'll just go up those six inches right so there's a one inch column right let's make this a group let's go in and actually make some faces so if we push this in three mil make that a group now i can just copy this spin it around these are obviously all pieces of mdf outside of uh, wall tabs and stuff. Oh, look, let's just do it. Why, why, why are we not doing it? Let's just do it. So we'll grab that corner, drag it down here. We'll divide this by seven. That gives me some space to put some slots in. Push this one in three mil, push this one in three mil, three mil, three mil. Do the same thing on the other side. We'll grab this one, drag it down here. Divide this by seven, push this in. Okay, cool. So now we can get rid of this wall because this one's going to be exactly the same. We can get rid of this wall because this one will be exactly the same. But what we'll do here is we'll push this out 3 mil. 3 mil. 3 mil. Oops. 3 mil and push this one in 3 mil. We're just creating the negative pattern. So there we've got our negative pattern. Let's just spin it around. So now we actually have a one inch column that we can cut and we'll assemble. Right. Blovsky says, after the last ruined stream, started working on my 20 millimeter MDF backdrop terrain for Gaslands. Some ruined housing blocks and some natural stuff. There you go, man. Awesome. We'll mount it on my Calyx shelf with some LEDs to light it up from the back. Awesome, man. That's so good. I'm glad to hear. Excuse me. SketchUp is a pretty easy program to use. And as I mentioned earlier, you know, it just depends on how complex you want to get. If we go grab something that's a little bit complex, let's log on to the server. The tools are exactly the same. And this is where Scott was always, you know, such a, you know, a wonderful designer. 
in that you know he uh, understood how the tools worked but more than that he had this ability to obviously you know princes um let's go have a look okay so where are we brock to sort this by some of this stuff in in the neo century so let's go into neo century into easy district let's grab kids um, no uh, let's grab one of the little what are they called um, food stands tuck some doner kebabs let's grab this where's the skp for it Let's grab this, let's download. So, you know, just, you know, all these little bits and pieces that Scott used to add, you know, this is a three mil piece of MDF but he's routed out the fry pan and we engrave away that circle. So by the time we've engraved away that circle, it leaves a recess in the MDF, which gives you that representation of a frying pan. Um, you know, adding just all this detail, which is, you know, what I think I would rather do um, than, you know, just creating you know, some of this type of stuff. This, this, this model here, you know, this stuff i'd rather i had a little bit more interest because you know, we're gonna laser cut this right assembly is is easy you know i have to cut out all these parts you know so we might as well try and make our models a little bit more a little bit more interesting a little bit more detailed so Vic says okay so we're back to this let me see if i can understand this Was that sound? Was that the someone subscribing sound? I don't, I don't. I don't remember. Somebody sent me a message or something. I think it was someone subscribing. Anyway, I wish I could draw a, a like a center elevator shaft, placing the floors on it so the floor holds it up. Maybe not. I could draw a little idea I could show you. Like a center elevator shaft, placing the floors on it. Up. All right, so let, 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 let's come back to this pillar, right? Let's see if we can understand this concept. Thinking I might set up a Discord server so that when I'm streaming, people can pop into, because Discord has that chat um, sort of feature. Uh, let's get rid of this. Let's make it actual proper square. Let's make it 100 millimeters by 100 millimeters. Just so it's square, right? And that way, you know, people can jump into Discord and, um, you know, we can actually chat properly. So here's a quick example of, you know, how, you know, I'm perhaps I'm not super familiar with uh, SketchUp, but if I wanted to align, let's just group all these parts here of this pillar. Just one, so. I missed one. Right. Let's group those. If I want to align this pillar in the center of this plate here, um, I can't select both of these shapes and like in Illustrator, normally you'd be able to go and, you know, align things. Um, I've never found anything like that in SketchUp outside of having to install lots of extensions and stuff. And because I use SketchUp uh, 2016 Pro, you know, the extension warehouse doesn't work for me. So I'm going to simply draw a cross through this shape here and we'll jump in here we'll draw across through this shape here uh, on my keyboard oops 
I've set up K as my wireframe key. So if I press K, I can now grab this point and drag it onto that point there. Um, and K off and move this down three mil. It's in the center. I can go back and get rid of these lines that I don't need. I'm just gonna cut that out of there for the moment, get rid of these lines that I didn't need. All right, so at least they're now in the center. draw a little idea I could show you. Am I close, Solvix? Uh, you know, am I close in terms of, you know, what you were thinking? Obviously, we've just got this one inch pillar here, but Obviously, we'd, we'd need this to be much wider in order to be able to support the floors, and we wouldn't have this six inch high floor. Okay. My thought was Ah, gotcha. I gotcha. All right, let's. Okay, so when I was looking, oh, see if, if yeah, I'm close on the mark here. Well, not it's a mildly different scenario, but whilst we're sitting here in the middle of the night messing around, let's have a look at this concept that I was thinking of playing with. So I saw that uh, you know, um, Quaggle Fernler, what's it called um, that page on Facebook with these simple L shapes on. And I was like, I've got to take it's different because you know, again, you know might be practical for 40k but it's it's super super boring so I thought if I make something that um, allows people to kind of build this however they want this is just a concept and it needs to be properly measured up and whatnot but we need a three layer thick wall so this is almost a centimeter so now we're getting to something that's a little bit thicker we need also a three inch by three inch what the hell three inch by three inch we need a three inch sort of grid pattern here so let's make this a group actually we can get rid of all this crap and we'll just tile up this stuff here that's three six nine inches right make all of this one group so we can move it around and manipulate it properly Let's rotate it up here make a copy of it load it around this way all right so this is an issue here Viv because if we're going to maintain three inches we need something to on it um, okay so let's go into one of these shapes and use our offset tool to drag this in by six millimeters. Push that out by three. Okay, cool. Get rid of that, get rid of that. So the concept that I'm trying to draw up here, I know that most of this stuff isn't super interesting for people to watch, but you know, so be it. Um, so this, these gaps here, this is all part of one wall. Then we have on top of this, so we'll grab this shape here. Have I gone far enough? No, I didn't. Damn it. Damn it, damn it, damn it. Um, this needs to be nine millimeters. Need to go another three. This will all make sense in a second. We got our wall, right? Get cop. I'm an idiot. I, I, I needed that other wall. Because I need to push these back. I need to push these back three. <laughs> oh. 
I could have kept that on the wall. Okay, so now I've got my layers happening here. Right? And that's duplicated on the inside. I'm essentially creating a window frame that you have space on the outside and space on the inside to put something. Olovsky says, for hobby needs, do you have an opinion on the BMO Flux laser cutter? I do not. I don't know it. Um, I'm sorry. So I'm going to select this here. I'm going to drag this 1.85 millimeters, which is the thinnest MDF that we use. I'll make that a group and I'll push that in three millimeters. So now that's sitting inside that recessed space. So if 40K players, uh, let's turn my wireframe on so I can see this corner here. Want to have a bottom floor that's completely plugged up. Catch up, you suck. Then you could just fill those panels in with a solid sheet. If you wanted something that had, you know, some windows or something in it, let's just draw some real simple windows here. Let's just draw this. Let's get our, our arc tool and just put a simple little you know, arc in there. And let's grab that do or whatever. Um, if you wanted some windows in there then you know there could be window panels um and keep in mind this is all one sheet these are not three inch you know sections that all connect together you know that's a completely different sort of concept um but you know i was thinking in terms of that simple ruin wherever it's gone i think we deleted it um that you've got some flexibility Lovsky says, no problem, mate. Was just curious because a professional laser cutter is way, way out of my price range. Um, I know a lot of people use the K40. Um, let's have a quick look at that. Uh, what's it called? A BMO Lux Cutter. world's smallest co2 laser cutter and engraver so the first thing that comes to my mind is when i see the term co2 laser cutter co2 so there's different types of tubes in a laser um, and most co2 lasers will have a glass tube inside it and that glass tube is what the laser travels through and that needs to be cooled so how is this cooled um, if it doesn't have a glass tube in it, like our Trotex, for example, have a ceramic tube in them, those ceramic tubes are air-cooled. I'm assuming this isn't going to have water hooked up to it to keep the laser tube cool. It's going to probably be air-cooled. Um, so here's a laser tube. can see it's glass you see this coil inside here this is what the laser is going through the so glass tubes burn out after a while um or all that tubes will burn out after a while um and and need to be replaced so that's one thing to keep in mind is how what's the operating hours the laser hours on these glass tubes what's it like in terms of being able to replace that tube I'm assuming on a, on a commercial system like this it's probably plug and play sort of they're probably trying to keep it fairly simple um, but that's one thing to keep in mind here. There doesn't seem to be a lot of detail here. BMO in stock ship now. Where is the description about this? How can there be no description about this? That immediately says to me, now forget about this thing. Products. Support, downloads. You'll also need uh, air assist. 
So you can't cut anything on a CO2 laser without having some compressed air connected to it. Otherwise you'll start shattering your lenses. Um, so I don't know if this has an inbuilt air compressor in it. A, a lot of lasers uh, will have an option for an internal air assist, uh, which gives them enough pressure, enough air pressure to keep the cutting uh, performance okay. Sometimes you need to vary that pressure, uh, how much air is coming out through the nozzle, uh, depending on what you're cutting. Um, you know, too much air when you're cutting acrylic things to frosting and all that sort of stuff. Uh, not enough um, air on foam, for example, causes fires. Um, but the fact that there's zero description here about what this machine is, immediately uh, I would have gone away from here already. Click here to redirect to cutting machine store for plywood, acrylic, and other laser consumables. Where is the information about this machine? It has a 30 watt laser tube in it. So 30 watts is going to be fine for hobby sort of work. The other thing to keep in mind is your extraction. How is this extracting? So a laser system comprises of several components. One, the laser machine, uh, air supply source that supplies air to the machine to stop your lenses from cracking and shattering. Keep in mind, cracked lenses are not uh, amazing. Uh, you know, uh, they have, you know, uh, when, you, when you crack a lens, it releases toxic vapors. Um, so you don't really want to be dealing with those sorts of things. Um, so you have a laser, an external air supply, or sometimes internal to supply air to the machine to keep the lens from cracking. Um, you have an extraction system to pull smoke and fumes and stuff, uh, gases out of the machine and exhaust them out somewhere. And then a cooling system to keep the laser tube cool. Now in our machines, all of that stuff can be internal. We don't run our machines like that. We have external. We don't need a cooling system on the Trotec because we use, excuse me, ceramic lens that are the tubes. They are, they're air cooled. Um, so there's, there's, there's several things here that you need to keep in mind. So, you know, when I'm looking at this machine here, I'm looking for some of that information and there's nothing here about it. Three and a half thousand. This machine. There's no detail about it. And three and a half grand, it's a tiny, tiny machine. How big is the bed? I do like the fact that it's got some rotary add-on tools, but you know, I don't know if you're going to be engraving on cups and glasses and all that sort of business. But the fact that there's zero information here is alarming. How big is that bed? By the fact that this looks like a desktop machine, probably no bigger than you know, maybe one of my little Epsons or my brother printers, I'm going to say that's maybe an A4 sheet in there. Yeah, bed is 21 by 30. Weird, on the European side there are the specs. Where'd that go to? .com.au Of course it went to an Australian page with nothing on it. Good job Australia. Let's have on it. It's both the most compact and least expensive dedicated laser cutter and engraver we've seen. Okay, so having an inbuilt camera is useful, especially if you want to print things out on, uh, you know, cardboard or whatever. Normally when you print stuff like that, you'll, you'll print registration marks and having a camera uh, should, in theory, allow you to look around and find where those registration marks are so that when you cut around the outside of your tokens or whatever, it will be cutting in exactly the right place. You don't need to worry about aligning material with your artwork and all that sort of stuff. Okay, so it has an internal water cooling system. Ultra thin laser engraves at an exceptional depth down to 0.05 millimeters. 
the clear resolution of a thousand DPI. laser won't be able to engrave on metals um, unless you coat it with something like Surmark or something or something like that uh, and then you can fuse that Surmark to the surface of the metal and then it rubs everything else off. I'd stick clear of anything to do with autofocus we have these on our Trotex and nobody that I know uses them because you know, whilst in theory it should allow you to make things fairly simple uh, in terms of focusing your laser, if something goes wrong and that collides into your laser head, um, then all of a sudden you uh, you end up with beam alignment issues and you know, let alone damage to you know um, any of your uh, running gear. So that's that's a wonderful feature, but I'd have a look and see if, is there a way I can still focus manually. Uh, because like I said, I, you know, I use a $100,000 machine and I don't use this feature. Look, I, I, I don't know. Um, I guess I guess for hobby work, you know, it, 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 it looks okay. Um, you know, the other thing, like I said, um, uh, most people that I know in the hobby will use something like a K40 um, and you can see there's a fairly considerable difference between the K40 it's also stronger um, you know I, I'm pretty sure you will need to supply this with air um, I didn't see anything on here about I think it said internal air supply right or it said internal water cooling I don't know have you know I don't, know. I don't want to spend too long looking through this but for three for three and a half grand, you know, I don't know if I'd be, you know, super keen on it. You know, like I said, most people that I know who do hobby work on a laser have a K40. Um, this is the machine that we started with. The machine it's a tube, so you'll need. You know, a water cooler, a water chiller to it. Um, you'll need an extractor and stuff for it. But you know, I spent you know more time tinkering with this than I did actually <laughs> you know cutting it. All right, so let's 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 get out of these lasers, right? So I hope you know the, the, some 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 of my feedback. Like cutting out from time to time. So Alobsky says, don't know if it's just me, but you cut off from time to time. And the Solvik says, I get that as well. Okay. Well, I'll try and keep an eye on the stream connection up. YouTube says, right now says excellent connection. Um, stream health. Okay, it, it does say it did cut out a little while ago. Something with the mic. Oh yeah, of course it is. This mic that I'm wearing is a super cheap mic. Maybe we'll get this other one connected up. Let's, um, while we're just chilling out, right? Let's go in here. Add this in. We'll add this mic. Okay, and we'll turn this one off. Let's turn that off. Okay. 
Let's move this way. All right, we'll see how that happens, how that goes. Now I've got an echo in here. Let's go in here. Um, let's just go. Uh, not sure. Close. Okay. Because it happens when you move your hands and stuff. All right, let's take this mic off. Um, and we'll see how we go. So I hope you guys can still hear me. Um, you know, we've got, uh, you know, up here now. So we'll see how it's too quiet. So none of that you would have heard <laughs> because I, on this scene on OBS, I didn't have the mic installed, but there we go. Should, should have sound now from, from this scene and we should have sound now from this scene. Um, all right. Anyway, so let's get back to the, you know, messing around with this thing here. As I said in the title, I really don't know what to do. I don't know if I should continue on with making some stuff like this. Again, the whole concept behind this is just making something for, you know, mass production for the club. You know, I guess, I guess in some ways, kind of like this stuff here, you know, making some simple stuff that we can uh, chuck into a box to, you know, run events. And, you know, all the competitive 40K people that I've spoken to have said this is all they want. As a terrain guy, you know, that really just, you know, just makes it disappointing. Um, yeah, it's, it's, you know, I don't play a lot of games that are, you know, played on, you know, with flat terrain. You know, I see people playing Ninth Age or um, Kings of War or Song of Ice and Fire with 2D terrain because it makes the gameplay easier. But, you know... 2D terrain is is not amazing. Uh, but it, you know, like I said, all the 40k players have said, you know, that this is the sort of stuff that they want to see in tournaments. If that's the case, then you know, maybe maybe that's all I should do, right? You know, you know we'll come back here. You know, we'll forget about all these cool, funky concepts. And, you know, we'll just make something that's super simple. Let's just, you know, drag a shape out. You know, go back to this scenario here. Um, maybe that's all I should do. I do also have a whole bunch of other stuff that I really should be getting on with. Um, not necessarily custom work, but stuff that people have asked for. Like uh, terrain for kill team. Um terrain for zone mortalis um a necromunda sort of gangplanks and walkways and stuff like that you know they're actual <laughs> products that uh, i can be making that will have a um a future a commercial potential rather than this sort of rubbish i did just want to start out these streams though with some of the basics um Let's go up five inches. So that way, if in the future I need to reference something, you know, uh, we covered that off in the, you know, stream two or stream three or whatever. Or, um, but I, the hell, if go up twenty mil. Um, but I do have lots of products that I actually need to get on to, which will be way more interesting to talk about and develop than this sort of stuff. Sobic says, yeah, Ford, um, War Machine Terrain is good since it works flat, but you can go crazy with it. One of the things I loved about um, War Machine in the beginning was all the cool terrain. And, you know, back in the beginning, you know, they used to... Oh, this is driving me nuts, man. I don't know 
why it's not it's snapping around like that. It shouldn't be snapping around like that. I don't know what's causing it. One of the things I loved about War Machine in the beginning was the fact that, you know, the terrain was great and in their map, they had a magazine at one stage, right? What was it called? Um, I can't remember what it was called. They had a magazine and it was like the old white dwarf in that, you know, they had all the cool terrain articles and stuff like the white dwarf used to have. Uh, and... As I slowly sort of watched the game progress, it just became, you know, more and more 2D and more and more 2D. You know, I remember seeing this cool article in that magazine um, that was about making some Signa terrain and it looked great. But as the competitive scene forgot, as, <laughs> as the uh, competitive scene, uh, you know, evolved, you know, all of that stopped happening. It all became 2D sort of stuff and it just wasn't, you know, my cup of tea anymore. All right, so in my typical fashion, I have started designing a model without actually knowing if it's going to fit on any of our sprues. Where are our sprues over here? All right, so it looks like this is going to fit on an A4 page. But, you know, probably want to put them on A3 just for the sake of simplicity let's let's do this let's drag this out six mil six mil all right so that gives us some room to put some sort of facade on here just so it's not super boring so let's put a six, a three mil facade on here. Let's find some centers of things. So, you know, what I'm thinking is to is to pop in here. Let's come up 20 mil. That's too high. Let's come up 15. Let's get rid of this. Let's get rid of this. Yeah, we'll... we'll clean all of this up in just a second. If we use two layers, it's going to give our wall a little bit of extra strength. We can also hide the tabs from the wall back here. Um, it just gives us a little bit more interest and a little bit more detail. Let's take a, let's take some sort of sh little column here and um, make this three mil. <clears throat> it doesn't look like three mil to me, Viv. Is it? It is. Let's take this and we'll stick it up here. way drag it down three mil just so we've got a little bit of extra relief let's take that same piece and drop it here how is oh yeah 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 yeah, yeah. And just because i like to have that extra lip around the bottom we'll drag that out three mil that'll come out three mil 
All right, so at least we got something that's a little bit more interesting. So if I did something like this, uh, I know what that is. I think that is my subscriber notification that's coming up. Um, I must fix up all these layers. <laughs> but I had it dragged off the screen, so I don't think I saw it actually popping up. But I'm pretty sure that weird sound is someone subscribing to the channel, so thank you so much. Let's go back to that chat for a bit. Solvix, War Machine Terrain is good since it works flat, but you can go crazy with it, yeah. Olovsky says, someone on Instagram was making industrial ter terrain out of plastic crates and it looked awesome, like a factory with a ton of small windows. I love scratch building. I, you know, I really, I've... I've been collecting a lot of stuff to do a bunch of scratch building and I'd like to see how I can incorporate some laser cut components into that. Um, excuse me. So that, uh, you know, I can repeat some of those things without having to cut out loads of foam core templates or cardboard or foam or whatever. Olovsky says concrete first floor and steel frame with windows. Could look awesome in MDF. Yeah, and I'm sure it could indeed. Magazine. I forgot the magazine. It was really good. It was great. Um, you know, I don't know if they still do it. Um, what was it called? Um, I've got a bunch of them in the studio. Privateer Press Magazine. No quarter. That's right. I don't I don't know if they're still doing it. I would be surprised I'd be surprised if they're not there's a no quarter prime subscription anyway I'll look into that later on it was it was such a good magazine Solvik says competitive is its own worst enemy yeah I'm not a huge fan of competitive games it's not my scene at all but you know from a club's perspective I would like them to have you know the the possibility to be able to you know have competitive events or you know at the very least be able to have a collection of terrain that we could lend to you know other uh, uh tos and stuff for uh their events and their games all right so now we've got this weird corner we need to deal with We will fix up these windows here in a second. Right now, they're looking very, you know, Romanesque. Should we put a buttress on here? Let's get a line tool out. Let's 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 go from here down here. It's here. We'll draw on this profile here. Some sort of buttress that's on an angle, isn't it? Thanks, SketchUp. I do like how all of this stuff I'm doing in the same document and super close to each other, so it's impossible to see anything. That's going to give us, you know, a, a representation of some depth to our building. You know, we've gone out now, what, three, six, nine, twelve millimeters. So whilst our overall wall is only six and this part here only three, you know, we're getting this representation of depth. Um, Olivsky says, I sent you the prototype of my build as a DM on Instagram. Mark joins us. Hi, Mark. How are you, mate? Hope you're keeping well. I don't mind, mate. Feel free to send me anything you want. 
I'm happy to have a look, of course. That'd be great. I'll check it out you know, after the stream, unless you want me to have a look at it on the streaming. You know, we can have a chat about it. So this corner... The more I play with this, the more I am thinking I will do something simple like this for the club. But, you know, what I would like to do is find a way that we don't need to have this space on here all the time. I would like to be able to take this base off so that you could take, you know, let's just move that base. Let's grab this rule and let's group it so we can manipulate it all together. Um, so that when we stack these, you know, we can just, you know, nest them all inside each other like this in a box. This is the worst way to do this. I don't know why you're doing it like this, Fifth. I don't know why you're trying to do it this way either. Anyway, you get the idea. So we can just nest them all inside each other like this. God. Stop wigging out, SketchUp. <laughs> so many times. Scott used to... Uh, his desk was next to mine. And, you know, he'd wear headphones and listen to his music and stuff. And, you know, every now and then you're just like, fuck you, SketchUp! And he'd be like, what's going on, man? He's like, oh, fuck, I don't know. It's doing something weird. And, um... Anyway, so... I don't know why we're worrying too much about this. But the concept being, you know, we can stack up five, six, seven, or eight of these ruins like this. Actually. Um, and then have all the bases separate. And then we're, that way it takes up such a tiny amount of space. in the box and then this building actually we can do this we can 100 do this this thing clips onto the base oh you know how we can do this you know how we can do this oh, this is entirely possible let's get our base back here I'm not entirely sure what to do about this corner here we can close up this gap obviously Leaving it like that does give us a little bit of uh, detail on uh, the edge here. Let's move this over three mil. Just grab this. Let's explode this so we've got our separate parts. We can close this up. Let's have a look and see what happens if we close it up. I'm just going to layer these pieces over the top in this jigsaw sort of pattern just to help obscure that gap. Yeah, like I was saying before, I don't want to be spending a huge amount of time messing around with these. The concept being just to have something simple for the club. You know, we can you know produce a hundred of these. You know, probably in a day. Um, this you know will probably take this kit here maybe five minutes to cut, and then I can just take a whole bunch of them to the club, and you know we can get everyone there to assemble them. And there we go. We've got, you know, 40 tables worth of, you know, 40k <laughs> terrain um, that, uh, you know, might be useful for, uh, you know, running events and stuff. Why is that still a group? Let's explode that. So we've got individual components. I don't like how this roof up here is, you know, not looking fantastic. So let's drag up some detail there. Actually, let's, let's drag this down. So six mil let's grab this piece here and drag it up to here I think what we'll do is we'll grab one of these corners here we'll drag this across to this side divide it by 21 and we'll 
go down three. Grab the center wall and lift it up by one mil. This wall here, I'm going to drag it out by two mil just so it overhangs the top ever so slightly. Right, so we'll match this up here, drag this out by two mil. Now, this piece here, let's drag this out here. Lift this wall up by one. All right, so now we're starting to get something that's a little bit more interesting. Now we still have that. Um, it's super boring on the inside. We'll do something about that. Mark says, buttress between windows will strengthen the architrave and also break up the monotony of the single faces. Um, yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, I, I think you joined us after, Mark. I was talking about, you know, this stuff that I'd seen um, on uh, Facebook uh, from these, uh, this guy here, Tabletop Terrain, where, you know, the 40K terrain is like this in the competitive scene. And, you know, fine. If that's what it is, that's what it is, you know. Everybody I've spoken to says we just want simple L-shaped ruins. Fine. Um, no, I'm still not familiar with the game, but I've seen people shoot through walls like this that don't apparently need line of sight. I don't really totally understand the game, and it might be something that I might need to actually chat with people at the club about, because when I've spoken to people or chatted with people on Facebook, it's very, very difficult to get a representation or understanding of what people are talking about. Um, so I might need to chat with some of the people at the club who are a bit more competitive to, you know, find out. So, you know, I wanted to do something that was just very, very simple, but, you know, not just a couple of pieces of, you know, foam and stuff glued together that, um, you know, would, would, would give a little bit more interest. I'm now thinking to myself if I should make this out of thinner material, 1.85, um, I think three mil is probably better because it will be stronger, even though we've got multiple layers and all that sort of stuff happening here. Um, I'll just keep it in three mil. It's, it's fine. 1.85 does cut faster, so it's cheaper to produce and therefore it costs less. Um, it's also cheaper to ship because it's a lighter material because it's obviously thinner. Sovic says, um, uh, so let's go back up mark here uh, alovsky says it's up to you i don't want to disturb your work mate i'm not working it's the middle of the night here my family's asleep it's a saturday night um i'm drinking an incredibly cold cup of tea and just messing about and i'm streaming it on youtube because you know otherwise you know i'd just be sitting here doing this anyway i'd rather just chat to people and you know you guys get to see a little bit of you know what goes through in terms of designing kits i get to talk to you guys about this sort of stuff and get feedback um and you know we we, we generally you know so yes i will if you don't mind i will we'll jump onto instagram in a minute how do i do that on a, i'm not a big instagram person i don't know how instagram works man well i know how it works but i just don't know I just, I'm not just, I'm not used to using it. Turn on notifications. Not now. I don't have any notifications. So how do I find out about messages and stuff? Is this the message icon? This thing that looks like a triangle? Yeah. I don't, I don't know. Oh, here we go, Alovsky83, watching your 
stream and prototyping. Greetings from Poland. From Poland! Wonderful. How are you, mate? I can't see because I've got too many cameras up here. Images blurred to protect you from unwanted content. To <laughs> reveal. What the fuck? Accept this. Move messages from Olovsky. I don't understand any of this stuff. Oh wow, that looks great, mate. Let me let me drag this down here. That looks great. One, one thing that I've been asked a couple of times uh, by people, um, I don't know. Can we can we can we zoom in in on this? Um, can I open this in a new tab and we can? Um, one thing I've been asked by a few people is to create sort of like facade backdrops that aren't actual buildings. It's a backdrop, you know, like you'd have on a movie set is you'd have that facade um, layer for people to take photographs and stuff in front of or to put along the edges of their table just to fill out the rest of the, you know, that disappearing space and enclose the board. Excuse me. So, Olovsky, you've designed this and then cut it on a laser, or did you design it and then printed it out? It kind of looks like foam core. It kind of looks like you've designed this, printed it out, stuck it on some foam core, and are cutting out the components. It looks great. I love it. So, let's come back. It looks good. All right, so where do, where do we get up to? So if it says for a basic building, I think it's a great idea. It's, it's looking okay. Uh, could it be done as a set of four, then a set of four mini ones to go with it, so eight to a table? It certainly could. Um, again, you know, the number of pieces that need to be done, and you know, it, it can be variable. All right, so I think this is looking fine. I think what we might do is I think we might take this layer here. I think we'll copy this layer here. And we'll grab this corner here and we'll dump it into the corner of the building over here. Let's chuck on our wireframe so we can make sure we're actually in the corner. This is going to be a solid kit. You know, we will quite literally be able to just chuck these into a box. So I think what I might do is take this inside layer. We'll clean up all of these, you know, misalignment, so to speak, or the symmetricity <laughs> of, of these kits, uh, of all these wall components and stuff, so that, uh, you know, they all fit properly. You know, these are all centered and all that sort of stuff. But, you know, just, you know, blocking out a rough shape here. I think I might chuck this on the inside just to give the inside of the building a little bit of detail. And you know, whilst we're adding <laughs> more and more components to this kit, um, we might as well, you know, go to town, right? There's no, there's no point having this as a laser cut model you know, when you could just knock this out of foam core in five minutes, we might as well add components here that uh, will make the model interesting. Get up in the corner up there. I don't know, we'll see, you know, we'll see what happens. So I know, I know most of this is not terribly exciting for people but thank you for tuning in and uh, joining in the, the chat with me sketch up you freak stop doing that let's get that wireframe one and hook it into there because otherwise you know like i said before i'm just going to be sitting here doing this anyway we're going to damage all these corners or figure something else about this and we're also going to make a uh, you know a profile uh, groove that this wall is going to sit into onto the base play it painted says what up viv hey man how are you a long time no see man um you know i don't spend a lot of time watching youtube these days um but i really must jump back on and see what you've been up to <laughs> 
Mark says it's looking at kind of like a 1920s apartment block. Awesome for 40k, but maybe a base design for other periods. Well, you know, this is just a you know a concept basically to start with, and we'll see how we go. It's classic, mate. I'm sure the 40k crew would be stoked. Well, let, you know, we'll see how we go. So it says I have wanted those, but never seen anyone uh, that makes them. Have wanted what? Mm. So Lobsky says, yeah, print out on phone court, yeah. Actually, you know, I'm, I'm not going to be able to find any photos. I'm not going to be able to find it. But when I had my retail store battle bunker years ago, 12 years or 13 years ago, or whatever it was, um, and Scott was working for me there. Uh, Scott's a texture artist. Um, and so he used to, he knows Photoshop and, you know, all the Adobe stuff inside out. So he used to do a lot of drawings in Photoshop and Illustrator and we'd print those out and glue them down to phone core and cut them out. We did some great Eldar stuff like that. Um, you know, a bunch of Necron stuff. And... So a lot of our stuff was done like that. Uh, Olovsky says, I will change the size of the windows to fit in granny grading as windows. Yeah, oh, it's so good. Especially when, you know, you get those small little windows in uh, warehouses, you know, the six inch by six inch panes. Um, they look so good. Sobic says, also Gaslands is my favorite game that no one wants to play here. Um, I tried to get into Gaslands, but that probably lasted about a day because, you know, gluing things down onto the little cars was um, not something I was, you know, in the right mind space for um but it's certainly something i want to have a look at uh, it's just that every time i get motivated to do something about it here at home i don't have any plastic card or anything like that and you kind of need all that stuff to make the you know all the additions that you put onto the model you know look cohesive ben methril is here g'day ben how are you mate hope you're well thanks uh, looks good viv oh, it's getting there you know it's it's you know, it's certainly better than, you know, just, you know, some simple, you know, flat walls. You know, we'll add some detail. We'll manipulate this, play with it a little bit. Uh, we'll jump out into um, uh, Illustrator in a minute and make some proper ornate panes and stuff to put in here. You know, we might think about the concept. Seems we've doubled up. We've got three layers here. We might think about the concept of putting in those panes here so that you can put windows in here or solid walls or whatever you want. Olovsky says, same here at Solvix, have a table's worth of terrain, about 50 cars and no one to play with. Man, 50 cars would be great. Ben says, have you considered more complex window shapes? Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll jump out in a minute to um, uh, uh, Illustrator, where, where it'll be a lot easier for us to make a, a more complex window. These are just here for play. All of this is just, none of this connects, none of it actually will actually be able to go together at the moment. It's, it's, it's all just conceptual. Um, the 13th says this looks nothing like yellow space marines yeah so for the people who um you know for the people who who, who weren't here uh before uh you know uh, what am i doing for the people who weren't here before you know the uh Space Marines, the, let me let me bring some up. I've really been enjoying playing. I haven't played any 40k for over a decade. Um, but let me let me turn that display back on. Um, so I've really been enjoying painting, you know, my Imperial Fists. You know, I did this guy the other day. You know, he was great fun to do. This is a recast, actually. Um, I didn't know that when I did the trade. I, it wouldn't have bothered me, you know... Uh, even if I did know um, but this I was amazed with you know you see the recast discussion come up all the time and when this guy came over and dropped this stuff off you know I'd been trading MDF kits and credit for in the KOD store because I have no money um, but I've got a mountain of MDF so if you've got 40k stuff and you're here in Melbourne and it's new on sprue or unpainted not stripped unpainted I'm happy to talk to you about doing some crazy traits uh, because, you know, if I can keep growing this army, you know, I'll keep growing it. So I painted this guy the other night and I was super impressed. It felt like a plastic kit, but, you know, it wasn't. It was some sort of 
ABS resin, so I don't know what it was, but it felt like a plastic kit. Plastic glue wouldn't melt it. I had to use super glue, so it was a little bit, you know, annoying to put together, but I was amazed. I didn't get any super glue on my fingers, and I didn't glue anything to my fingers. Um, I was amazed. He was great fun to paint. So I painted him up the other night. Um, I'm currently, you know, working on one of these impulses. Um, it's looking a little bit dirty here in this photo because it hasn't had its next layer of the, the yellow. There's a slightly different shade here. I don't know what that's about. That could just be an optical illusion because this guy's got the highlights on him. And those highlights really deceive your eyes in terms of changing the uh, color tone that you see. Um, he, he was great fun to paint. Um, I painted up some of the flyboys the other day, pictures of the club and blah, blah, blah. Painted up some of these flyboys the other day. Um, they were great fun to paint. I don't know what they're called. I'm just calling them flyboys. And this captain kind of dude thingy here. I'm not a 40k person. <laughs> but the miniatures, these are super fun to paint. I'm really, really enjoying painting these figures. Um, and so, yeah, I've got a bucket load of stuff now to, to, to do. So, yes, there's some yellow space marines. Close that down. Come back into SketchUp. Um, ah, uh, the backdrops for the wanted comment. Yes, yeah. So it is something that people have asked us for. Um, but like you know, most things that I do, you know, I just don't get around to doing them because I generally work on what I want to work on. Like I said about an hour or so ago, you know, I should be working on some stuff for Kill Team and some stuff for Zone Mortalis. And Zone Mortalis I will definitely be doing because I've got someone who's popping into my house tomorrow to trade me a whole bunch of, you know, 40K stuff, three boxes of, you know, Primara stuff, all new in box on Sprue. And he wants credit for the store. Jason Dance, thanks for subscribing to the channel, mate. Much appreciated. Um, he wants to trade that for some Zone Mortalis terrain and I don't have any. So I said to him, you know, this will be the perfect catalyst for me to sit down and design a set of zone mortalis stuff uh, because he's coming to drop me off that stuff tomorrow and he says i know you viv you know you're part of our local community i trust you um so i need to design some stuff for that um so i should be working on that instead of this simple 40k stuff but you know like i've said several times now there's a fairly significant and growing 40k scene at the club and you know we do have quite a lot of 40k tournaments here in melbourne that uh, it would be nice to be able to support them with some terrain. So if we had something simple that, you know, I could spend just a day at the studio, we could laser cut a hundred of these and um, the guys at the club and stuff can assemble them. Tamsin P has joined us again. I'm late again. <laughs> You're never late. No one's ever late. A wizard is never late, Fruit Wagons. Mark says, Viv needed minions, so he painted yellow ones. Ah, oh, lello minions. I just, I enjoy painting yellow. With an airbrush, it's obviously super easy. Um, I just like, you know, my Boromites for Gates of Antares are yellow. I, I like yellow. It's it's just looks great on the table. The 13th says, no super glue on your fingers. What magic is this? I was shocked because, you know, there's some small parts in that kit and, you know, because of you know some things weren't exactly square and you know the mold or whatever had shifted so you had to uh it was not and it wasn't bad but it certainly wasn't a fantastic experience gluing that kit together but i was amazed i had no glue on my fingers i was absolutely shocked there was definitely magic going in and then he goes on to say the white helmets really set them apart yeah yeah well you know i've tried to you know i don't i don't know much about the um the the um you know you know what are they called ranks and all that sort of stuff but you know apparently white helmets are for veterans and stuff and um you know they're great they're, they've been so much fun to paint so much fun to paint um you know this these are the indomitus sets you know these guys um just you know there's there's detail galore but um, you know, I've done very, very simple jobs. You know, this is not obviously a work in progress picture. Um, 
I've got to fix up these shoulder poles and I've got to do it highlight all the red and stuff and I've got them to a stage where you know I'm happy with them now I'll come back and I will actually highlight all of this stuff and um, spend some time playing around with them because they're gorgeous figures um, I don't know how much game time they're gonna see but you know just just super fun I think I went through these in, in the previous stream Lodzki says, I use Superglue constantly and what changed my life was a syringe needle. No more glue on fingers, super precision and no glue wasted. If it clogs, just use a lighter and unclog the needle. Can you get those? Because, you know, I use the Contact to Professional plastic cement uh, and that's got a needle applicator. I didn't know you could get them for super glue. I'll have to have a look. I don't inhale the, the fumes and it spits out glue sometimes. I so don't point uh, at stuff, yeah, sure. I have super glue spatter on my laptop monitor. <laughs> oh dear. Um, uh, all right. Oh man, I, I don't think, uh, I think I was looking at all these pictures by myself. I totally forgot to put the screen capture on. I was, <laughs> while I was talking about my Marines, I was, I was going through these photos here, but I just realized when I looked at OBS that, uh, I, I had the focus on, um, um, SketchUp. So you didn't actually see me run through any of these miniatures anyway they've been great fun to paint so if i can get some simple 40k stuff done for the club then um you know it gives us a little bit of flexibility in terms of being able to provide terrain to other clubs or events or whatever all right we'll come back and do something about these windows and cutouts and stuff shortly um kind of happy with these buttresses coming in here i kind of want this overhanging the buttress a little bit Oops, I'm trying to measure this architrave here it is what six mil. So let's let's bring it out by 1.5. Bring this out by 1.5, and we need to bring that out to there. So that's just overlapping that slightly. All right. So conceptually, I think this is fine. We, you know, this is all you know just block work, and you know nothing is being aligned properly at this stage i just want to get an overall concept you know in place and then we'll spend a little bit of time actually making this into a kit that will actually assemble and work and inside doesn't need to be super detailed obviously now with these buttresses that we've added in here like if we get rid of these we just cut these out of here it's pretty plain just adding that simple little bit of detail in there gives the model a way more interest um, but i don't think i worry about doing that on the inside obviously you wouldn't have buttresses on the inside of a building anyway or, or this sort of exterior detail um, what i might do though so I might just we have a small minor problem here in that this exterior detail is not at the same height here so let's grab this wall out of here just for a minute and we'll measure this distance from here to here 15 mil let's get rid of that let's drag a line up this way 15 mil so then this should be sitting there so we'll drag that back down to here. And so normally when I go through my design process, this is what I do. I just start blocking out shapes and manipulating things. And um, I don't really have any sort of plan in mind. I just start, you know, playing. And the more I play, the more a concept starts to become, you know, apparent and, uh, you know, I fiddle and fiddle and fiddle and then we end up with something. All right, so I like um, the fact now that we have a skirting board around the bottom here, architraves at the top. Um, I'm not massively keen about this being a single piece of MDF, but you know, our part count is already growing. You know, already we're up to probably 
three A3 sheets here. Oh, thanks, Ketchup. I don't like this top. You're gonna have to sort something out about the top. All right, let's have a look at the windows. <clears throat> Because the windows will introduce us to another component that we normally, or another process that we normally use. And that's, um, uh, what's, it, what's it called? Um, Quaggle Fernler, Illustrator. So there's our previous building. So let's, let's chuck that out of here. Let's grab a, uh, a Google window and we'll just say, you know, ornate windows. some images all right what's happening in the chat <clears throat> discussions about the needles for uh um super glues the 13th said if someone wants to learn these kind of software where would they start what are we looking at okay so the program that i'm playing here with is called sketchup this is SketchUp 2016 Pro, as you can see up in the left there. I haven't upgraded SketchUp because, you know, this version of the program has everything that I need to need it to have. The only thing that I'm missing here is access to the extensions warehouse, um, which isn't accessible anymore in older versions of SketchUp. Um, but I don't need anything from the extensions warehouse. It just provides you, you know, you know, extra add-ins and stuff you know previously i was talking about aligning things or you know distributing uh objects evenly and all that sort of stuff all those sorts of things are extensions um but i don't use those uh, you know i you know the, some of them would probably make my life a little bit easier but you know i'm just so used to having to you know do things manually and you know with my my tape measure over here you know drawing lines and guides and all that sort of stuff manually that i just don't see the need to have to upgrade um, and the biggest issue being that, you know, when I bought 2016, um, uh, SketchUp 2016, you could buy a license for it and you just have it. Um, but like so many other things, it's moved to a subscription uh, system where you now pay, you know, monthly. And, uh, you know, I don't want any more monthly subscriptions. So um, the, the best place to learn is just to, you know, Google things, um, watch uh, tutorials on YouTube. Hopefully, if you've got questions, my, my streams here might provide some uh, uh, some answers for you. Um, but, you know, I use SketchUp specifically for laser cutting. It's not the best tool for CAD work, but for laser cutting, um, it works fine for me. Um, if you want to do um, CAD work uh, for uh, printing, then your different sort of software, Fusion 360, Blender, Tinkercad, um, you know, a whole bunch of other sort of software exists for that sort of stuff. All right, so where are we? Now we, we, we're going into Illustrator. Let's just create a new document here. 1000 by 600 is fine. That'll be that. Let's get our ornate windows back. So we want some cool looking windows in here, right? So you could simply change the style of this, of this kit by simply just changing the shape of the windows. Yeah, there's some cool stuff like cutting all this stuff out by hand is a you know massive massive you know something like this might be cool Anyway, so I'm just gonna I'm just looking for for windows here, um, and then you know if we add the term silhouette in here, we can end up with some fairly clean shapes that we can have a look at. I don't know. There's there's, there's so many options. There's so many options for us. All these cool, you know ornate ones i need to do some window packs you know people have asked for you know window packs and all that sort of stuff you know 
It's uh, not terribly complicated to do. I just need to sit down and, and do it. One of the biggest issues is, is determining like window sizes and all that sort of stuff. All right, so let's, let's get a little bit interactive here because otherwise I'll just keep clicking through these windows. So, um, let's, let's, let's call this, uh, line one. Let's call this line two. Let's call this line three. Position one, two, three, four, and five. Which line and which position should we go to? So Ben says arch style with pointed top line two position one. All right, let's open that and Solvik says line one position three. All right, so let's have a look at this. So let's go to Ben's first. So Ben says um, arch style with pointed top. This first one here. The second one here. I like this one here. Let's copy this image and we'll bring it over to Illustrator. We'll paste it in here. All right. So this isn't going to be usable for us. We could, if you wanted to be lazy, this is a copyrighted image from vector stock. We can't use this, but you know, you could on here, try and live trace this object image trace, make an expand. Um, and you know, it'll do its best to, you know, make some sort of image, uh, vector image that you can, you know, play around with, but you know, it's going to give us a shit result. So we'll just paste that in here and we'll just use this. Let's um, switch on our layers panel. Where's our layers panel? Make a new layer and we'll lock this. Let's just move it onto the artboard and we'll lock that layer and we'll come and work on this layer here. All right, so this is the window here that we want, right? So let's make, um, you know, being a vector graphic, we can, you know, resize all of this stuff. Let's um, get this. Clear. Let's give it a black stroke. Well, it's not really black, but um, let's make our stroke something that we can see. Uh, yellow is difficult to see. Let's go blue. Okay. So we, we first up want that peak in the top. So I'm just going to grab one of these. Oops. We'll grab this corner here, we'll drag that down, we'll grab this point here, drag this down to sort of somewhere around about there, then we'll duplicate this shape, transform, reflect, create a copy, and we'll drag these two together. Now we've got it's kind of like a an arch, it's probably not as defined as we want it at the top, but we can fix that in a minute. Let's go to our Pathfinder tool. Where's Pathfinder, Pathfinder, and we'll merge those. So now we've got one shape here, but you know, I'm not super keen with that. So let's go back a step. We'll go back a step um, and we'll come in here and with our curve radius tool, curve radius, we should be able to manipulate this a little bit more. Give us a finer point there. Cool. Now we'll transform this, select it, right click, transform, reflect, create a copy, drag those over so their center lines are together and merge those using the pathfinder. So there, now we've got sort of that sort of rough shape that we want. Let's drag a copy of this over here. We'll duplicate this again. I'm just using my shift and alt keys on my keyboard and we'll just minimize this a little bit. And we'll stick sort of one here, one here, and another one there. And just group those and then center everything together. And I think we'll make our window frame around it a little bit larger. 
uh, holding my shift key maintains my uh, proportions. Let's um, center all this stuff. Use my direct selection tool, which I've set up as A. I'll select all these anchor points and then drag them all down. So now we've sort of got this bit of our window frame going on here. I do need to uh, create a copy of this, so object path offset it. That'll be fine. So there we've got our border of our window frame. We need to put these rosettes in here. So let's grab ourselves a circle tool. At this point, it doesn't really matter for the size because we can manipulate this. We'll drag this up here. We'll drag this down into the center. Drag this into the center. We'll select all of those. Use our Pathfinder tool to merge them all together. We get sort of like a similar shape. This is a bit more of a clover leaf pattern. So let's undo all of this. Let's um, redo those last couple of steps. And we'll just go one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. I'm just using the arrow keys on my keyboard. One, two, three, four, five. Select all of those, merge them with the Pathfinder. Now yeah, we end up with this cool little shape in the middle here that we can use. All right, so there's been some other suggestions for, I want to say line two, position four, but that's easy for me to say. So <laughs> let's let's go back to our windows. Line two, <laughs> position four. <laughs> yeah, radio. Yeah. <laughs> then, you know, this might be something that I might, this will take an hour or so to do. Um, this, this These sorts of things I would like to do. Uh, because again, you know, trying to cut these out on, uh, you know, phone core or, you know, even just out of cardboard, even printing this out and sticking it onto a piece of serial card and trying to cut that out would be a nightmare. Um, Belovsky says, illustrated my favorite program since CS3. There we go. Obviously been using it for a while then. Um, so that looks okay, but I'm just going to go back. I'm going to move everything up one, one. I'm a super basic, uh, illustrator user. Um, whenever Scott's done anything in illustrator, he's like, I don't know why you're doing it like that, man. And he'll show me a way to, you know, make it, you know, so much easier. All right, let's just take this. Uh, so we'll go in here. We'll grab this line. We'll cut that out of there. Actually, I don't think we'll cut it. We'll copy it out. And then uh, we'll just keep that separate for later. Let's adjust the size of this a little bit. And we'll stick that in here. It's a bit too small. Let's make it a bit bigger. So I'm a super basic um, user of Illustrator. I'm gonna just group those two things together and then I'm gonna center it with that one there. Then I'm gonna group all of that and then select everything and center it. So now everything should in theory be symmetrical. All right, so we've got a basic sort of uh, window pattern here. Let's copy all of this and we'll stick it on a new artboard. Fine, that'll be fine. I don't think we need to do anything else to it. File, export, uh, um, as a DWG and desktop split ruin and we'll call this ornate window one scale is one to one millimeters one unit uh, preserve appearance fine okay great so now we've got that uh, DWG um, exported out and we'll bring it in here but we might need need to manipulate it a little bit so we'll go file import. Uh, that was on my desktop under split ruin, ornate window one, import that. So now it's imported that window. So here is where that first extension called make faces comes in. So I'm just gonna explode out this. This will be all in groups because of how I've designed it in Illustrator. We wanna ex explode it out until we can't explode it anymore. All right, my explode option is blocked out. So let's select all of this. We'll click make faces. Uh, that's the extension that I've got installed. Um, you can't see it. Let me just move it up here. 
So this, this extension here, make faces, you still can't see it because I've put it under a logo. Good idea, Viv. So this one, make faces, this extension from so for you you can google this and just download it and import it manually you don't need to use the extension warehouse and make faces so now i've got my artwork here with my faces in it now this is going to be cut out 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 so let's cut those out right so this is my window frame here we can take this for the moment let's just double click on this we'll copy it bring it over here I uh, will extr extrude this out with the push pull tool to three mil and we'll um, group all of this. Now, whoa, sketch up. If all of this stuff uh, annoys you, you can spend the time to clean all of this up, get rid of all these extra um, lines. These aren't anchor points. I don't know where these come from. Um, all right, so we can see here we've got a problem. There's a problem. When I delete this line here, it deletes that face. And so that tells me that this line here is not straight. And if you have a look here, you can see that the line here is not straight. And sometimes when you export from Illustrator, it will round off corners and do weird shit. Uh, I haven't figured it out why it does it, but you can see, you know, these corners here need to be cleaned up um, and so we're gonna have to look at this one here I don't know why it does this sometimes it does it sometimes it doesn't so I'm just working on the face that I'm going to keep um, and then periodically um, cut this out select everything delete it paste it back in place and re-extrude it um, and you'll see that you know now when we start cleaning this up we'll uh, we won't have any issues like there's that, there's that little line there. We'll get rid of those. Okay, so that face is still not square. Let's get rid of that one. You can see that that line there is not square. Oh, sketch up, you drive me nuts. Um, I don't know why it does this, but it's super annoying. All right, so now that line is straight. Anyway, so we'll just go through. This is the process of making it something that's a little bit more ornate. We start in Illustrator and um, draw up our, our window. This is fairly basic. Um, export it as a DWG and then bring it into SketchUp and if necessary, clean it up. All right. Thirteen says I used to do a lot of graphics work in a previous life that I really should have uh, tried to make a career out of. It's uh, not something I've ever ever done. This is probably the most annoying part here. Is doing all of this hoo-ha I, I did once figure it out where I could import uh, a DWG from uh, Illustrator that was absolutely clean I don't know how I did that or, or how I got it working but um, I guess I need to sit down at some stage and, and try and figure it out anyway All of these lines here on this curve, you know, if we delete these, it's going to get rid of that face. We don't want that. But if I hold my shift key and highlight them, then it will just hide them. So any of these that I don't want to see, shift key, highlight them and it will hide them all. Ah oh, man, SketchUp does weird things sometimes when you zoom in. School holidays here in um, Victoria started on Friday, so I'm looking forward to you know doing a little bit of 
school activity or you know holiday sort of activity with my daughter you know we're gonna go see some uh, a movie the um she's super keen super keen to see it's not holiday heights washington heights um super keen you know we love musicals and um so that's coming came out on the 24th uh so i think i might need to hide that one too and uh hide that one uh okay something's not straight so looking forward to going seeing that none of this aside from making all our you know corners and stuff square is necessary all right so we've, we've done our exterior of this window fine let's take this window uh, over to our model which is all the way over here somewhere and um, have a bit of a look this obviously is not going to fit in this window frame here because you know we just design stuff without measuring anything <laughs> which is you know uh, so entirely typical of me but I think something like that is gonna is gonna be okay Alright, so before we come around and do our windows properly, you know, there's just a very quick example of, you know, creating this ornate window. And then we would simply merge this into this uh, facade panel here. Um, we need to align everything properly, lay it all out. Let's delete that, we don't need it for the moment. Um, lay all of this out properly so these are all properly aligned and spaced out evenly. And, and that way we know what our internal detail or our size of our internal panel here can be so that we can make a window to actually match and, and, and fit it in place. And I, I do I do like this window. So um, we, we'll certainly do that one. Um, there were some other suggestions here in the chat. Person says, that's a money window right there. Uh, let's go back to our chat, line one, position four. Okay, so Ben said, we'll come back to um, our windows. Come back to our windows here. So Ben said, uh, line two, position one, which was this one. I want to say line two, position four. Um, ben says number four. Okay, so that's the one that we did do. Perfect. Um, Mark says, 40K has a gothic feel. Line one, pick one, arches. Line one, pick one. Which I think was this. Oh. So I'll come back and I'll do a whole bunch of these sorts of windows. Um, you know, the, the the more complex these are, we'll rip this image right out of here for the moment. The more complex these images are, the the more obviously difficult they are to do. Um, but you know, some of these you know might be you know fine if you're doing this for yourself. Obviously, I can't use any of this stuff, but. Um, you know, image trace and, you know, make and expand it, you know, you should be able to use some of this, but you, know, you can see it does weird things when you just rip an image. You're way better off just drawing it yourself. Okay. So I'll do a bunch of these windows. Yeah, Ben says the one I pointed out. Yeah, perfect. Okay, cool. So let's start aligning this i'm still not super happy with the top of this building you know what we should do you know what we should do this is the wrong way around let's grab this stick it here let's grab this if we had some reference to work from it would make way more sense let's flip that around let's extend this to here Let's extend this to here. We'll pull this out three mil this way and we'll pull this out two mil this way just to overhang this detail. Now, all of a sudden, it's looking very Victorian. Let's group these for the moment. 
if we group them we can manipulate this whole shape and just flip it over then we'll explode it out to get our individual pieces and we can start manipulating them separately this is looking very you know american brownstone now So I'm going to leave these two pieces, this piece and this piece as separate pieces, but you know, normally we do try to keep the, you know, kits as simple as possible. So, you know, we'd normally take this and make it just one L shape so you can slip it straight on top, but that means it's taking up a huge amount of real estate on the um, sprues. This way I can cut down that real estate space. It just means you've got more parts to, uh, you know, naff around with and assemble. That's looking way better. So we've capped off the top of the, the roof here. You know, and one thing that we could do if we really wanted to, you know, make this a little bit more pretty is we could just um, angle off this bit here. Oops. So at least that way, when you put these bits on top of the kit here, you know, it'll line up. So right here, we've got the perfect opportunity because we've got a, um, a ledge here that overhangs our roof. We've got the perfect opportunity to model some pigeon shit on here because pigeons are going to sit on here and they're going to shit off the edge and it's going to land right on this ledge here. And I like that. So I'm not going to expand this out to overhang the roof so the pigeons are shitting on the paper down here. Uh, I like that idea. Um, all right, I'm pretty happy with how this is looking. Now we just need to um, align our buttresses so everything is uh, symmetrical. Then we can figure out how big our pane on the inside is here is going to be so we can play around with some windows. Um, and then obviously, you know, vice versa, you know, what's going to happen on the inside here. I am mildly tempted to, um, offset the floor and put a second floor in here. Um, just so that, you know, we get a little bit more detail on that ruined edge here. The model's not going to need it for this space here. It'll hold a, you know, a bunch of metal models without any problems at all. Um, but from a, from a, you know, detail perspective, having two layers like that makes it look so much better, but you know, that we might have a look, it depends on how much space we've got in our sprue once we start, uh, you know, laying everything out. All right. I'm going to duck off real quick. I'll be back in just a second and then we'll align all of this stuff, lay it all out and, um, come back and pop some windows in. Once we get some windows in there, we can start, you know, slotting and tabbing all of this together. Mm. Then we'll talk about the base. And again, keeping in mind that I want the base to be removable so that I can nest all of these inside each other in a box and then they'll all just plug onto a base. So I will be back shortly.
Okay. Right, let's uh, let's get this sorted out. So so far, we just need to measure our base. Make sure that, of course, it's some weird number. Of course, it's some weird number. How the hell did that happen? I swear we started with square. Okay, at least it's square, right? <laughs> it's some weird random number. What I might do. So I'm just going to pull this out, 3mm here and 3mm here, just so we've got that lip around the bottom. I like that lip. Now we need to align. Scroll off, I'm tired of that instructor telling me what to do. Now we just need to align our panes here so that they're all the same uh, distance apart. So this first one comes in three mil from the wall join or six mil from the corner. That's coming in six mil from the corner. That's fine. So I'm just going to delete this one. I'm going to delete this one. I'm going to delete this one. I'm going to draw a little guide here that comes in six mil. And I'm going to grab this one and we're going to copy this and what? Grab that point there and we'll copy it and we'll drag it to this point over here and divide this by oops divide by three what there we go that'll give us two extra walls so now that these are all you know evenly spaced and we'll do the same thing on this side we'll delete this one we'll delete this one we'll delete this one We'll draw a guide that comes in six mil from this side. Now we know that this one is in the right position already. I'll copy this one. Stick it there, divide it by three, which will give me two more of them. So now I know, just come into this wall here, we'll delete that, delete that, delete that, copy this wall, delete it, push it out. And we'll go for three mil. Okay, so do the same thing on this wall. Let's delete that, delete that, delete that. So let's push back in. Um, so we've got this space here now between this point here this number here. Let's copy this. Why can't I copy that number? What the hell, man? So there's a number at the bottom of the screen that you can't see because my stupid scrolling text is there. Um, that I should be able to copy, but for some reason I can't. And it is 47. Oh, this is tiny. This model is tiny. Everything we've just done might be pointless. We'll make it and see what happens. 106. Okay, so there are our dimensions for what we want our window to be. So where was our window? Here. I wonder what happens if we just try and skew this out. Let's undo that. Let's get our dimensions. So width wise, we want this to be 47.936484 and 106 millimeters. So we have squashed and compressed it Keeping in mind, we're only going to use this inside portion. So right now, there's going to be a three mil gap around our window. Let's export this and see what it looks like. I, I know that this isn't going to be good, but 
but you know we, let's just export it out all right let's export this out with some different settings do i want to replace it yes maximum editability forget about the appearance colors scale the line weights alter paths for appearance okay let's just, let's just try this and see what happens we'll come back to sketchup delete our guides and we'll import that DWG we just made DWG export no what are we exporting things for cancel this import a DWG I was wondering what was going on all right so there's a I stumped it in the same place as the other one a problem let's delete that that must be where our axis is join file import stwg okay select all this all explode it all every time we bring something from illustrator we need to explode it to its component parts make faces Karen Hogg, thank you for subscribing to the channel. I don't think you're watching the live stream. You might have been watching one of my other videos, but thank you so much for subscribing. I'm going to copy that. Paste it here. Sketch up, you freak. It does weird things if you try to zoom in and you're not on a shape or a face. See, I'm zooming inside this wall here and it just goes straight in. Super annoying. But if I zoom in on a component, no, it hasn't, that didn't do anything. We can still see that, you know, we've got issues here. I don't know why sometimes it does this. It's super annoying. Anyway, we don't need to worry about cleaning up any of the lines. We just want to clean up the corners because that's going to, if we're trying to move an object around when we're talking about laser precision measurements to five decimal points we don't want to have jagged corners sketch up you freak you make my life very difficult and slightly annoying Because I've just come out of Illustrator, you know, I'm forgetting all of my bloody shortcut keys. Alright, so that should be that. Everything else should be fine. Oh shit, I've just deleted everything, haven't I? Yep, fuck. Because I forgot to make this shape here a group, when I just selected everything just then, I selected all of everything else. Okay, let's quickly do one thing. Stop pressing that Alt key. We're just going to quickly make this a group. So that when I select this face here and select everything, and delete it, nothing else will get deleted. All right, I wish I didn't have to do that because this window isn't going to work. Move it over three mil, move it up three mil. So now that should, in theory, be in the middle of our building. Uh, you know, actually, it might. It might actually work. So let's copy this. We'll copy this point at the back here, and we'll drag this across to that point there, and then we'll move it over three. Copy that point at the back. Drag it over. Bring it over three. Okay. Oh, that looks sick! 
All right, let's grab these windows and this wall and we'll copy them out over this way. We want to get this wall, this wall, this wall. We want to move that point into there. We want to move this all somewhere where we've got a little bit of room to play with. And then we want to explode all of this. And then we want to delete that, delete that, delete that. And then in theory, I should be able to select that face, delete that, get rid of that. Did I just delete everything again? I did, I'm an idiot. Control undo, control undo. There's our models back. Said. Let's just quickly triple click. Actually, we don't need to worry about this. Just extract that out. Select all of this. Delete it. Paste it back in place and push this out. Three mil. Right. Now we can make this one shape. Make a group. We'll take the copy of this. And normally, the, my you know, working artboards all end up like this with you know shit everywhere, and then I've got to come back and clean them up. So we'll stick, let's get rid of our wall. We don't need that. We don't need those now. We don't need that. I might keep a copy of this. So we'll just move it over there. We should put something around here. What have we lost here? Oh yeah, we've lost our actual arch of our window point. So we might need to come back in and pop something in here just to help define the rest of our window. So Ben says it looks uh, <laughs> good, except for the clothes at the top being a bit warped. Yeah, that's because I got lazy and uh, I, I stretched it out. So they're not symmetrical anymore. Should we fix that? I think we should fix it. I think we should fix it. And we also need to maintain our arch here. We've got to get this arch back in. And so to do that, we need a little bit of extra geometry in our image from, uh, what's it called? Quaggle Bakla, um, Illustrator. So let's go back to Illustrator. So again, you know, making those clovers was fairly straightforward. We'll just start with a little circle, something like that. Um, and we'll just make a copy of that. We'll butt them up together. We'll butt this one into the middle here. Make another one, butt them in. One, two, three. One, two, we'll bring this one back across one. Bring this one down one and two. Bring this up to use our pathfinder tool to merge it all together. We'll take our external shape, we'll copy that over there, paste it in. We might need to change the size of these a little bit. We might need some smaller circles. So what we'll do is we'll take that shape we've just drawn. We'll go um, object path offset and we'll make it minus one millimeter smaller. No. Object path offset point uh, minus point five, something like that. We'll cut that out of there. We'll get rid of that. We'll get rid of that. Something like this. Something like this. So we'll stick two of those there. The third one at the top. So that one there. That one there. We'll group. Oops, group those together, align it with this. Group those together. Let's go back into the shape and get rid of those.
Let me go back to SketchUp for a second. So we, we need some sort of um, archway uh, cut out in here. Let's just quickly just draw this in stupid like this. I think we need something like this. Again, this will be much easier to do in Illustrator. But just, you know, conscious conceptually. <laughs> I just think we need something like that in there to help, you know, define our window. Otherwise, we need to start worrying about a facade layer in here. Mm. Let's draw it up and see what we get. Uh, sketch it. Okay, so we need to get... of our window that space is 47.936484 by 106 okay so that's the actual space right let's just group all of this for a moment group that let's stick it inside that space we'll center it right, so we'll get rid of this line here Get rid of this line here. Actually, we shouldn't have done all of that. Let's take a copy of this just in case we need it for manipulation later on. All right, so this is the actual shape we're going to end up with in SketchUp. All these voids here being our negative space. Let's take this shape out of here. We want our negative space to line up with it. So I might just manually manipulate this. Oops. Let's just do this. We'll squeeze this into there. We'll squeeze this into there. chop that out of that there there we go we just need to it's gonna be weird it's gonna be weird transform reflect click vertically create a copy Mm. 
it's going to be slightly weird. Again, as I said before, I am not the best uh, user of uh, <laughs> Illustrator. Let's reflect this. What? Over. Why is it jumping around like that? Maybe we want to move this point here over here. We're going to move this point over here. What's going on with our line weight? I'm just thinking about this peak here. Do I want to, you know, maintain that peak here? Because if we maintain that peak here, we have a mild issue with creating a negative space to cut out of. Or if I leave that there like that and we add, you know, some sort of detail in here. Let's just leave that as it is for the moment. Let's save this as a ornate window one save that and we'll export our dwg again it's going to export everything on here ornate window one let's override it and we'll bring it in and see what it looks like hard drive wigging itself out again I think it's having a fancy so deep red says I'm just gonna unplug that hard drive it's driving me nuts. Okay. Uh, okay, so what is that hard drive doing? So Deep Red says, what's the width of your laser? Mine is 0 0.02 millimeters. 0 0.02 millimeters seems too wide to me. Um, it's, it's pretty good. In terms of the curve of the laser, stop it. Sorry guys, I know you can't hear that noise, but something connected to my computer keeps connecting and disconnecting and connecting and disconnecting. That's just driving me batty. Um, Sorry about that. I seem to have lost my music now.
Bear with me for just half a second. I'll be back in a second. I will, uh, I, yeah, deep red. Um, our laser, the curve on our laser, I'm not 100% sure, but I don't add tolerance to anything. Um, 0.2 of a millimeter does sound pretty wide. Um, I'm pretty sure the Trotex go down to 0.1. Um, um, it, it, it might be um, it might be s s smaller. I, I can't I can't remember off the top of my head. Is the music still playing? Why can't I hear it? Because last time we did this, I sat here in silence for ages. Monitoring output. I can't hear any music. I don't have that hard drive carrying on anymore about connecting and disconnecting. We'll sort out the music in a minute. Why I cannot hear it. I should be able to hear it. All right, so let's... Here's our windows from before. So much crap over here. Let's import this in. Explode all of this stuff. Delete all of this. We can make a face out of this. Make faces. We want to select that face there. Copy it. Delete all of that. Paste it in place. Push that three mil. Make a shape. Okay. So the rest of our model. Let's drag that up that way. Okay, so now we want this wall here. Let's copy this out of here. Let's just redraw a new one. Push it out three mil. Okay, so Deep Red says, I'd have to cut each piece separately and increase the size by 0.01 millimeters or the pieces would be uh, too loose to fit. Um, when when we first started with the you know Big Red, the Chinese laser, we used to have to add tolerance to everything. But uh, after we switched up to the Trotex, um, we, we found that any tolerance would just create a sloppy kit. So we don't add any tolerance to our kits. It can sometimes cause a problem with MDF, you know, especially if it starts to get over 3.1. Um, 3.12 really is the maximum. Well, 3.14 is the maximum. Anything over that, you start to have to really wedge things together. Um, but yeah, we don't add any tolerance to our kits and the curve of the laser is enough to allow us to just slot those components together, you know, Quite, quite, quite nicely. All right, so we're going to get rid of this wall here. We'll put this back in. Yeah, cool tunes. These are all the music is from Stream Beats uh, by Harris Heller, and I wish I could hear it. I don't know why I can't. The headphones are working because the bloody hard drive disconnecting and reconnecting was reminding me that the headphones are working. Uh, but um, for some reason, the playback doesn't seem to be coming through. All right, so we're going to put all of those in there. We'll select that, select that, and our wall. We'll drag this out of here. Just create a copy of it for the moment. We will explode all of this stuff. We'll delete one of that line, that line, and that line. Select the face, cut it. Now, keep in mind, I need to highlight this because otherwise I'll delete everything else. Push this out by three, and we'll make this a group. And we'll drag this back into place. 
just going to dump it there for the moment. I'm going to delete that, delete that, delete that, delete that. Delete that. Oh, we've deleted one wall too many. Delete that. And we'll pop our wall back in place and see what it looks like. There we go. I think that looks better. Now, in theory, we should be able to take a copy of this wall. Flip it around. And it should. Of course, it's not going to because it's me. Sit right in there. We can get rid of that and it should work. Now, <laughs> okay, so I can hear that going off. I can't hear the music. Monitor and output. There we go. And we're back on. Okay, aside from, you know, all of this junk in here, cleaning up these shapes and stuff properly, getting rid of all these excess lines, you know, I guess we can just go in here at the moment and just hide all of this stuff. Um, just to clean things up. All right, so. I'm happy with the outside of this building. I don't think I'm gonna worry too much about the straight edges on this building. Again, you know, if we if we if we have a look at um, the the stuff that we've seen before, um, you know, these sort of 40k ruins that you see everywhere, you know, they just have all these straight edges on them anyway. Um, and you know, once it's once it's assembled, we can just come at the corners with a Dremel and just gouge away at some of these corners and just ruffle them up a little bit and. Right, so what does this mean now? Now it means that we've got this interior wall here. If we delete this and delete this, we have our facade layer. Oh, let's just put those back for a second. We have our wall layer. And our internal facade. Let's just remove our internal facade for a moment and open up this wall. And we'll just manipulate some of this stuff around. What I'm, what I'm trying to get to here is having a look to see if I can create a space in here where if you wanted to block these windows up, you could easily do that. And if you didn't want to have them blocked up, then they could be open. First, we need to figure out the internal space. All right, so that's the same size as our windows, right? Now, normally, this rosette detail up here would be covered. So I'll bring those down to there, which means that only our glass panes can now be open. 
But Ben says, what if you sandwich the window frame in between two other pieces and then cut out arches in the other two layers? Uh, yes, we can. It requires a slightly different shape of window. Instead of this shape, we, we want the other bit, but yes, that's entirely possible. So let's get rid of this wall. <sighs> Sketch up, you freak. Let's move this over three. So now our window is in the middle. Let's take this shape here. dump that there and let's take that same shape and dump it on the outside so now we've trapped our window inside there but let's cut this out we'll cut this out we'll cut this out push that out Push this down three mil. Push this down three mil. I think three mil might be too much, but we'll find out in a minute. This would give a nice frame to the window also. Oops. Push that out three mil. What has happened here? What? Oh, something weird's happened. Happened to this wall. Uh oh. Cisneros. Thank you so much for subscribing to the channel. 
If you're watching the stream, thank you so much. Richard Swan, thanks for joining us. Something has happened to my wall here. Oh shit, what's happened here? Take our window out of here for a second. This window looks fine. I've cut this wall in half somehow. How? I have no idea. Uh-oh. Good night, Solvix. Thanks for tuning in so far. How long have we been streaming for? Three hours. Wow. All right, good spend forever trying things, Ben. That's why I've got so many models that have never been finished. Because I play and play and play around like this in the middle of the night. And, um, and then they never get finished. We've got a problem here. Something's happened to this wall and I don't know what's happened to it. So now we're gonna start pulling this apart. We'll move that out a hundred. We'll grab this, we'll grab that. We'll move these out a hundred. Grab this and move it out a hundred. How did this wall get cut like this? And the interior wall too. Okay. I, I, I like this. Thanks, Ben, for the suggestion. I'm just going to fix up this section here. I'm just going to draw a line straight across here. Side wall. And we'll just redraw that. And you can check to make sure that those two walls intersect properly in that corner which is hidden from us at the moment. Um, no, we don't want this wall. We want this one. Ah! 
Okay. I've moved something out of alignment while I've been messing about. Alright, we've played with this for long enough. Fix me up. Alright, so now we've got that window cut out inside there, right? Right, so this kit's going to have a little bit of 1.85 mil MDF in it. Just so that you can plug up these windows. And it also gives, what have I done here? And it gives a slightly better relief on the inside rather than this big cutout here. So in theory now, should be able to select all of this. Copy it. Paste it. Let's make it a group. Just rotate it this way. We need to shuffle the walls over a little bit. But in theory, I don't know what I've done here. It's, it's too late to be doing this. But this wall here should fit. In here. But it doesn't. the problem too much messing around I think we might we might we might call this one here this is the concept this is what we're going to go with um i think next time we'll uh we'll lay it all up and then cut it and see how we go i've got to fix up this issue with the wall i have no idea what's happened over here it's um super super confusing 
I don't know why. I can't do all this. We have three windows. Oh, I see what's happened. Oh, I see what's happened. This is going to be a monster, this kit. Okay, let's group this. Alright, we're going to do a couple of things just to clean up this edge in here. This will go up a hundred. This will go up a hundred. sort this out these walls need to shuffle in a little bit to fill in this gap here and then you know we can worry about connecting it all tabbing it all together and plugging it all together but that's it what's the time it's quarter past two to ben says looks cool viv can't wait to see it as a kit so i can get it assembled and painted up well hopefully you know that will happen in the coming week and then you know if it all works then we can um, yeah, cut it and see how it goes. There we go. Another crazy session. Thank you so much to everyone that's joined me. Thank you so much for uh, your, all your interactions in the comments. Um, and hopefully I'll be back. You know, we'll, we'll see the next part of this or the final stage of it. I'm going to mess with this and just get it all, you know, properly aligned and everything. And then we'll come back next time, tab it all, make sure it all assembles properly, flatten it, export it to Illustrator and get it all ready for um, cutting, hopefully at some stage next week. There we go. Thanks for tuning in. <laughs> I'll see you next time.